Tonight, live at 5 on KMTV, a major downtown makeover called off. It's a dead deal. A decision the mayor calls disappointing and regrettable. HDR has announced it will not move its headquarters to 11th and Dodge. Late this afternoon, the CEO announced the engineering company is scrapping plans for a 16-story building just months before work was set to start. Reporter Miranda Christian is live from 11th and Douglas with reactions. We just got done speaking with the mayor who says this decision is very disappointing. They've been working with HDR for two years to relocate them to downtown Omaha. The mayor says she's not sure why the purchase agreement between the Omaha Performing Arts and HDR was never finalized. In February, Old Pass announced that they would sell their lot to HDR, but that agreement was never reached. And HDR had a deadline to get their construction started this summer. The mayor says that even though this decision is disappointing, they don't think this will deter focus away from other developing projects downtown. is unexpected and it's very um, unfortunate for downtown. I'm however pleased that HDR is still planning on building their global headquarters in Omaha. Now, like the mayor just said, HDR did send out a statement saying they do plan to stay in Omaha, that they will look at other places to relocate their headquarters. Of course, we will continue to follow this developing as it goes. We have not for, heard from Omaha Performing Arts yet on their end of this and everything, but so far, HDR will not be relocating to this lot here at 11th and Douglas. Reporting live, I'm Miranda Christian, KMTV Action 3 News. The road to the now scuttled deal has been rocky from the start. HDR began talking to the city about the move from 84th and Dodge to downtown in early 2015. In October of last year, debate became red hot after opponents raised concerns about the idea that Omaha Performing Arts would sell its current land to HDR and take over three buildings, including the SPECT that you see right here. In November, the mayor's office announced a $10 million offer to buy those buildings and give them to OPA. Preservationists were worried they would demolish the buildings in favor of additional parking for HDR and the Holland Center. In early December, the city planning board voted to change Omaha's master plan. But in February, OPA pulled the plug on the building purchase deal and things unraveled from there. An update now on breaking news we told you about at 4. Police have reopened traffic near one of Omaha's busiest intersections. Crews found a man injured after getting hit by a tow truck near 72nd and Cass around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Witnesses say he ran off the bus into oncoming traffic and was thrown about 20 feet. Medics rushed the man to the hospital as police shut down traffic for more than an hour. Police say the man is in critical condition. Driving anywhere on the interstate is proving easier said than done. Several accidents on I-80 have tied up traffic, causing major delays during the next several days, and even road officials are taking notice. Reporter Miranda Christian looks at the impact on drivers and those trying to keep them safe. An accident on eastbound I-80 this morning caused traffic to slow down near the 42nd Street exit after a driver hit the median and a man was partially ejected from the car he was riding in. There was another just an hour earlier near the 84th Street exit that also caused a slowdown. Wednesday, there was one just before 5 and another one that morning. Drivers have been dealing with traffic jams all week. We have, and my husband has, you know, coming to and from work. Um, I don't know if it's just kind of the joys of living next to the interstate, but we do, it does kind of affect our life a little bit. The other day there was one, I had to get off on it where I didn't want to take some back roads. Police say the number of accidents they're responding to hasn't gone up, but there have been more serious ones with injuries. The reason for the seriousness of the injuries is due to uh, lack of seatbelt use, and one was involved in the use of alcohol. Sergeant Doug Klein says it doesn't help when an injury accident happens right at rush hour. He also says speed is playing a factor. Some drivers are just trying to avoid the interstate altogether. Like I said, I try to avoid it. Uh, just because of the accidents. If you get an accident on the interstate, um, you can imagine there's a high likelihood that it's going to be a severe accident. And the recent accidents are causing some to pay more attention. I was just thinking that recently, I don't know, I feel like I have to be way more alert as a driver 
because you're kind of looking out for other people who might be distracted or whatnot. I think people drive very aggressive these days. That was Miranda Christian reporting. We asked on Twitter how these accidents have been affecting you. So far, 59% of you say you now just avoid driving on the interstate altogether. If you've been outside today and you just saw those interviews, you know it has been blustery. High winds caused issues in many areas, blowing over trash cans and other large items. In some parts of the Omaha area, things turned downright dangerous. Reporter Nick Starling is live to explain today. Nick. Yeah, Craig, this wind is no joke. It's actually kind of hard to keep my standing right here. We're live at the Sarpy County landfill where they're closed for the day because of trash blowing around the area. You can see some of the trash lining this fence right now, but it's actually a lot clearer than another fence near here because they've been picking off trash from here. Now, there's some video of what we took just before. It kind of looks like a mural, but of trash lining this fence. The wind can also be a danger in residential areas near 65th and Hamilton Street at about 1245 this afternoon. A tree fell down because of the high winds. The homeowner tells me she was startled by the sound. There was this huge sound that sounded like something hit the house, actually, so I kind of got scared. Luckily, the tree fell the other way and not onto her house, but it did knock down a power line, causing a fire to a neighbor's house. We'll show you a little bit of that damage coming up at 6. Reporting live at the Sarpy County Landfill, Nick Starling, KMTV Action 3 News. All right, it's been crazy, that's for sure. The high winds causing headaches in other parts of the Omaha area as well. A couple of pictures to show you this afternoon. Check out this giant tree limb that fell in Bellevue. Look at the roots, just came right up. That was just before noon. Police Chief Mark Albert tweeted this shot of the limb blocking Bellevue Boulevard North. Police and city crews joined forces in clearing that road. By the way, you can find other wind pictures at our website or send us yours to iContribute at KMTV.com. Now, your weather alert first forecast. Peak wind in Omaha this afternoon was 54 miles an hour. There were some showers earlier off to the east of us. Those have faded away. As the winds diminish through tomorrow, then the attention turns to cold as we head into Friday night and early Saturday. There is a freeze watch in effect beginning tomorrow night at 1 a.m. That will continue through 9 a.m. on Saturday with temperatures dropping back into the upper 20s. We've been dropping this afternoon. Readings now in the lower and mid 50s here. 40s in northwestern portions of Iowa. The winds right now, they've diminished some from this afternoon. They're north northwest at about 20 to 30 miles an hour. However, we're still seeing local gusts at 40 or better. 40 in Omaha, 44 in Lincoln, 40 in Norfolk, and 41 mile an hour winds in terms of gusts as of the current hour. Threat trackers on the low side, however, because of the freeze conditions, we've kind of highlighted that for Saturday. There is a chance for some thunder early. On Sunday, the first few hours after sunrise, right now that doesn't look too bad. I'll have more on the timing of that potential showers on Sunday. That is coming up. Thanks, Jim. The latest now on the lawsuit against the state of Nebraska by the family of murder victim Andrea Kruger. A three-judge appeals panel today upheld a federal judge's ruling that the state cannot be sued because the decision to release killer Nico Jenkins is protected by law. Vince Powers, the Kruger family attorney, tells KMTV News the family will ask the entire Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals to hear a civil rights claim. That claim is that the facts of the case turn Jenkins into a state-created danger. Nico Jenkins Jenkins is still waiting for sentencing after pleading no contest to four first degree murder charges. Jenkins killed four people in Omaha shortly after he was released from prison in 2013. In Lincoln, Nebraska lawmakers went back to debating the issues today. The talk comes after what State said? Senator Ernie Chambers stopped his long filibuster. Chambers spent the past few days slowing work on various measures after lawmakers rejected his right to die bill while passing the winner take all electoral vote system for presidential elections, which he opposes. One controversial bill moved a step closer to passing today. State lawmakers voted to advance the bill that would let so called dreamers get professional and commercial licenses. On Wednesday, Omaha Mayor Gene Stothert supported the bill, saying it would keep Nebraska talent in the state. Today, opponents said the change could encourage more undocumented workers to come to Nebraska. If we do this, they'll all come here. Maybe that's what you want. 
because we'll be the only state that does it. So we'll have everybody come here. And then we'll have a disaster if we get the right president and DACA is overturned. The Dreamers certification bill needs one more round of approval Continuing before debates. it goes to yeah. the governor who's threatening to veto it. An update now on a Lincoln teen convicted of attacking a classmate in a high school bathroom. A judge sentenced Sarah Piccolo to five years probation for the October 2013 attack. The 16-year-old used a knife and claw hammer to attack another girl at Lincoln Pius X High School. Police caught Piccolo days later in Kansas. In August of 2014, she pleaded no contest to felony assault as part of the plea deal. The boys of summer make their official return to Warner Park. Tonight is the home opener for the Omaha Storm Chasers. They kick off the season against New Orleans. Tonight, the team will pay tribute to its parent club, the World Series champs, the Kansas City Royals. It's also the start of Thirsty Thursday. The first pitch is at 7.05. And our very own Ryan McPike will throw out the ceremonial first pitch. He hopes to improve on last year's effort. And good effort, good effort, almost there. Ryan showed plenty of arm, but it bounced before it it got to the catcher. Maybe the wind will help him out a little today. He'll, he gets a second shot at it, so we'll see how that goes. A tremendous form in the yes, windup, I very, must say. I know he played baseball in high school. He yeah, he had some heat on it. Yeah. Uh, and the catcher tried to barehand it, wound up with a sore hand. Yes. We hope the wind is blowing in for McPike and the wind is blowing out for the Storm Chasers exactly. hitters. Exactly. Hopefully that works out. Win win. More political barbs on the road to the White House with both candidates on both sides getting testy. Why Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump hit New York on the defense and how they hope their home state will turn things around. That's coming up next. Craig, that's not a win-win. That's a wind-win. <laughs> uh, we do have more wind on tap for tomorrow. Not quite as strong. I'll show you that in the freeze watch coming up right after the break. You're watching KMTV Action 3 News with Jennifer Griswold. Craig Negrelli, and weather with meteorologist Jim Flowers. This is KMTV Action 3 News, live at 5.